Exactly. But that's exactly the point, right? It's a, it's a totally different kind of, you know, corporate storytelling in that it's, you know, a lot less about the product and really, like you say, much more about the results. And that's what I think is so cool about it. The story with Joe Grant is actually our most popular story. Uh, and I think it, it is because we're diving into the person, we're diving into this hacker mindset. You know, Joe Grant, he, he was this hacker. He was, you know, in front of the Supreme Court. He he had a show on on, on, on Discovery Channel. So it was this, it's, he, he's this just interesting guy and talking about hacking, talking about hacking electronics and the hacker mindset. And we're just going to explore this. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Altium On Track podcast. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we are talking with Ben Kitzinger, producer and director of Altium Stories. This is going to be a real treat. If you've ever seen the Altium Stories series, you know how well done they are, and I'm really excited to talk to Ben about the series. Ben, thanks so much for being here today. Thanks for having me, Zach. Absolutely. Um, as I mentioned, I've seen many of the Altium stories. Um, I have a couple of favorites, and I'm really interested to talk to you about the series. So if you could, just briefly tell us about the Altium Stories series for those who are unaware. Yeah, so Altium Stories really uh, captures um, captures the untold stories of engineers out there and how they make an impact in the world through engineering, specifically electrical engineering. So we we go ahead and you know we we, we explore their story not just from a technical perspective but really uh, the challenges the triumphs that they have the innovations that they go through but also the passion that they that they have in engineering you know um, obviously engineers they have a, a deep passion for creating making a difference in the world and that's what we want to capture. Yeah, this sounds like a really great way to to get to know some of the founders and I guess get inside their head a little bit. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And they have a not, lot of knowledge and they love to share that knowledge as well. So we know that our audience are mostly electrical engineers or people in the technology industry, especially electronics. And there is a big uh, educational aspect to it as well. So we really want to know, you know, we want to get into the mindset of people, but we also want to inspire people to maybe, you know, do things differently the next time they approach a problem after watching. So if we know, if we see that people, you know, do things differently, change their approach, change their mindset, I think we did our job when, um, um, with the series and we achieved our goal. You know, I think one thing that's interesting is, I'm not sure how often you get to, to capture this, but being able to capture whatever it was that led to that eureka moment for somebody who is an entrepreneur or is an innovator, sometimes those moments are really pedestrian you know they're sitting at your desk staring at something and all of a sudden you know this great idea emerges they're not really grand like you would expect so i'm i'm wondering um have you had people really you know fawn over some of their eureka moments yeah we actually that's uh that's always a question we ask it's like the origin story of why why did they start um, doing their business and it's always different it's always a different story and um so very exciting uh it it is very exciting to go and and dive deeper and see where they come from and you know so, sometimes it is it is pretty straightforward you know they came out of college uh they came out of the education and they wanted to apply whatever they did into the real world but sometimes it is really traumatic and we're actually preparing now for a shoot with uh, safety by Celia, and she has no background in engineering, but she 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 had a you know she 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 was a victim of of an assault on the street, and lived for a long time with uh, with this post traumatic um, thoughts, and she kind of wrote it down on a piece of paper. She wrote down on, on a piece of paper what things that would make her feel safe, and. One time she had the idea, hey, I can make a bracelet that looks like jewelry. And so when, as we kind of explored the story with her, it came to like that the, the product that they made is, uh, is, a, is a manifestation of that list. And so now, now when, when, when women or they also, um, 
they're also thinking to expand, of course, to to other to other users. Uh, but when a woman now puts that bracelet on, um, they basically put on the list that she created and and everything that she kind of went through um, is now in, in inside of one package in a product. And it's just uh, yeah, it can go from pretty straightforward to pretty deep. Yeah, that that's really not a type of I guess you could say customer success story that you expect to hear <laughs> from any level of corporate marketing anywhere else in the electronics industry. I mean, that's that's really deeply personal. Yes, it is, and uh, I think that's what uh, what people might not expect from all team stories. Because if you see all team stories, you think, uh, okay, you know, we're gonna hear about all team, and you do to a certain extent. But we really keep the, fo the focus more on on their story, on their engineer story, on the customer story, on the impact that they make. And why is that? Because we as all team, we we share that uh, that passion for hey, the, hey, electronics and technology can really make an impact in people's lives, and. We as all team, we are an enabler of, you know, making processes easier, really getting getting the electronics done uh, from a software side. But the real impact in the real world is made through our customers. And we want to celebrate that. That's 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 our shared passion. That's our shared, you know, that, that's something that we want to celebrate and, and bring bring forward. And through that, also inspire others to to do meaningful things with engineering. You know, so yes, we talk about Altium and how we kind of facilitate the development of these solutions. But what really is the focus of the Altium stories uh, episodes in specific is is the is the customer and what they do and and kind of getting a deep dive into into how they approach things and what matters to them and and uh, yeah. And if you go on our channel, you will see many examples of that. You know, the thing that really cemented it for me about it being that deeply personal was the episode with Joe Grand. And I think that's probably the, the most popular episode on the channel. Um, Joe Grand, obviously, former podcast guest um, a couple of years ago. And um, his story was very in-depth, mostly focusing on his personal life. Like, you didn't see a lot of hype around Altium Designer as a software product. You know, you really got to know the guy in some of his personal challenges. I thought that was so interesting when I first saw it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And actually the opening shot is him working an Altium designer. <laughs> so you might well, not even know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. but that's exactly the point, right? It's a, it's a totally different kind of, you know, corporate storytelling in that it's, you know, a lot less about the product and really, like you say, much more about the results. And that's what I think is so cool about it. Yeah, especially the, I think the, so the story with Joe Grant is actually our most popular story. Uh, and I think it, it is because we're diving into the person, we're diving into this hacker mindset. You know, Joe Grant, he he was this hacker. He was, you know, in front of the Supreme Court. He he had a show on on on, on Discovery Channel. So it was this. It's he, he's this just interesting guy, and talking about hacking, talking about hacking electronics, and the hacker mindset. And we're just going to explore this, you know. And I think it inspires a lot of people. We're getting a lot of positive responses in the comments. Obviously, you know, the, the, the views and, and success of these episodes speak for themselves. And, you know, it's just, it's rewarding to see that people benefit from that and that we get the chance to share those stories. Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally agree. Um, now, with this being such a unique, I guess you could say corporate marketing type of role, I, I just have to, to wonder, how did you uh, start working in this role with Altium. Yeah, I've been I've been with Altium since ten years, um, okay. and personally, I've always been interested in storytelling. Not necessarily video, but storytelling in in um, graphic design, branding. Um, I I did music. I, I produced some electronic music. I just was fascinated uh, of of how you can tell stories with music, and video just. <laughs> I landed on video because it has so many different layers and I was I was fascinated by multimedia and combining media together. And video is just a powerful way to tell stories. It has so many layers. It has the music, it has the spoken word, it has the image, B-roll. Um, and and even the color correction, you know, with, with the way that you color grade, you can, you know, get people into a certain mood or emotional state. 
And on the other side, on the receiving end, it's just easy to, you know, consume. You watch a video and you kind of, you know, it's like watching a movie, you know, you're being entertained, you learn something, but it's easy, easier than reading, especially nowadays. We need to be mindful of a, of a audience that has a, you know, sh shorter attention span, very high requirements on the content that they produce. So, yeah. And all team stores specifically came out of um, the desire for any company, I think, to create customer success videos or customer success um, content like customer testimonials. Um, and we did that in the beginning, but we were just a little bit too curious and started to ask, you know, deeper questions <laughs> that might made it into the final edit. And naturally, you know, seeing the response and uh, Internally, but also externally, we, we just uh, we just kept going this direction of making it more a documentary film than a customer testimonial. No, that doesn't mean that we that we don't do the testimonials. We do that. We have like an alternate edit that goes deeper into Altium, and I think that's something that people should also watch because it shows how how our customers are using Altium, how they benefit from it. I'm sure we can learn something from from how they use it. That's that's. Um, that's still something that we want to do and that we that we feel is important. The ultimate stories side of things is is uh, us just going deeper, us celebrating along alongside our customers the impact that electronics makes, the process of of engineering, the mindset. Yeah, just sharing that passion with with our community. I think most corporate marketing folks, if they were asked to do this kind of thing would not have probed so deeply into the either the technology or the eureka moments. So, of course, I think it helps to point out that your background is not just multimedia, it's not just film, but you actually have I believe a background in computer science. Yeah, yes. That's my major. It was computer science and media. That's yeah, an so interesting that's combo. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was because it, uh, computer science was a detour for me to get where I actually wanted to go. So <laughs> I, I was interested in motion graphics and, and all this all this stuff from, from very early on. So I, when I was 14 years old, I started, you know, for doing tutorials on how to do great motion graphics and use the storytelling um, in, in, in all kinds of in the things that I mentioned before. Um, but we didn't have the funds to go and to the to the university uh, uh, that I wanted to go. Art school was too artsy for me, I would say, you know, it was, <laughs> it was a little bit too artsy. And, uh, and so I just like, I, I'm originally from Austria and in, in Austria, we have the privilege to, to join university uh, free of cost. And so, you know, I just went there and I saw a banner. It said computer science in medicine. I was like, okay, now, mm, it was, computer science in, in, in economy, uh, computer science in media. It was like, Hey, that's for me. You know, so yeah. I just went and signed up and then did computer science. And, uh, you know, it was very interesting. I actually, sometimes I miss programming because, uh, I really enjoyed that <laughs> hunting the box <laughs> or, or how do you want to say it? And then getting that. And then out of this, it, it works and you just like, Oh yeah. You know, it's just for well, electrical engineers is probably, you know, the, the LED is blinking and that's the, the, the success. So I can identify a little bit with that technical um, side of, of things. And I think yeah, it can benefit. Yeah. It's the like, yes, kind of moment when it finally works. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Do you hear the trash truck in the back? So uh, one thing I have to ask, I think I mentioned my favorite story was Joe Grant. Um, and that, that was the most popular one. There's actually, I think a second place story, which, uh, which was uh, light matter, which I thought was really interesting as oh, well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, what are some of your favorite stories that you filmed? <laughs> That's so difficult. Uh, so I, I think there are some stories that I thought about that question a lot, right? I'm thinking and every Every story is just so unique. It's really hard to pick out one, right? They are so unique in their own way. Either, you know, the founding stories are interesting or or the, the impact that they make is so interesting. But yeah, Light Matters is definitely one that's interesting from a technology perspective and how it can displace, you know, conventional chips with with optical chips and just the, the whole the whole 
impact that that has on data centers with AI and things like that. Uh, there's also, uh, you know, when it comes to human uh, stories with the human humanitarian aspect, you know, we had we had stories with um, Project Vive, who who built this voice box, which enabled people with um, cerebral palsy to operate a computer or to to speak or to you know, you know just communicate with the world so so they they, they built this voice box and something like you know Stephen Hawking would have but those devices are expensive and they were a startup and they built this device and you can buy it for like five hundred dollars make it available to people and so they made it available to this to this woman with cerebral palsy who couldn't speak anymore but she loved poetry she loved to create poetry and then through that device she could present the poem that she wrote to an audience and see the reaction. And so this gives me chills, right? This gives me goosebumps to, to, to think about that. And that was that that's engineering can make an impact on people can enable them again. And so, yeah, I mean, there are other stories on the, on the, on, on our YouTube channel that uh, have a similar background. But also some of them are just really inspirational, you know, how to start a business, how to go from maker to market. We have a couple of, of those examples where people started with an Arduino and then worked their way towards mass market. So how do you do that? Um, and, and for that, we had the Ardu Boy, which is like a mini game console. Actually, I have it somewhere here. But uh, yeah, it's a mini game console. Uh, and uh, he started with Arduino and then went to China manufacturing and work with people just to figure out how can I mass produce this thing and the, the, the kind of uh, pitfalls that they went through. And yeah, there are many, there are many. Yeah. Like. Yeah. That, I mean, that's really interesting. And um, the, the woman that received the, the voice box, please tell me that you were able to actually talk to her or interview her. Were you able to? We were able to talk to uh, a young gentleman that we we had the privilege to visit. Um, we didn't meet the, that specific lady that I, that I mentioned, um, but we, we we had her captured uh, separately. But we met this uh, this other gentleman, and and he was he was just you know locked in his chair, in his, in his wheelchair, and uh, it was hard for him to communicate. But he had they they provided him a tab tablet and you know. Uh, everything he needed in order to kind of communicate. And it was really touching to see his mother talk, uh, talk to us as well. And her expressing just, you know, that she could have more of a relationship with her son, you know, through that technology, which was harder, harder before, you know, because now he can, he can express his needs more. He can, you know, he express himself mm. more broadly. You know, so so she she talked about the, the relationship and, and just like as a caregiver, how much easier it is and how and and less frustrating it, it all became. So, yeah. So when you approach companies to participate in the series, how do they react? Are, are they excited to share what they're doing? Are they hesitant? Are they are they maybe skeptical because maybe it, it might be seen as kind of a piece of corporate marketing or what, what, what's the reaction? So that really depends on the size of the company. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So uh, usually, you know, uh, of course, larger companies are um, usually not in a dire need to get exposure or they don't have the time or resources to spend on working with us on a documentary film. Um, they oftentimes are also a little bit hesitant about sharing about their technology. So they are just like in, in general, a little bit more blocked off from from press or media or kind of media productions. So it's 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 a little bit harder, but we do have larger companies. And, and for, for example, Karcher in, in Germany uh, was open and, and gave us an insight into, you know, the way that they collaborate. And they're 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 quite a big company. And so you, you could kind of see how they how they operate. And th we're diving a little bit into, you know, how cleaning products are made, how the electronics and cleaning products were made and the future of cleaning through technology. Who really gets excited about these opportunities, of course, you know, like startups or, or student teams or like individuals. Um, 
who are looking to share their story, who are looking to get exposure. Um, so usually, usually these these uh, these types are easy, more more impressed by us, and actually also surprised. They are they are surprised that Ultim is doing something like that, and um, that makes me proud of you know what we're doing because you know it's uh, it's something that um, that not every company is doing. But clearly, is a brand statement from our side. You know that this is something that's important to us. We want to invest in that, and um, and we're we're passionate about what those those people are doing. So, and then I think one thing that's a really interesting opportunity for engineers who might be viewing this uh, series is they might get exposed to a piece of technology that they had no idea was even possible or existed because, you know, we, I think we both mentioned light matter, which is, you know, optical computing. And that is something that, you know, if you're in the research community, maybe you've been doing this for the past, you know, however many decades, you're intimately familiar. But if you're working as an engineer at a company, or maybe you're an entrepreneur, or you just, you know, looking for that next big thing, you know, this might show you that you never know where those ideas are going to come from. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. So that's, that's where the inspiration part comes in, right? Like, how can I think out of the box to, to make, to change my, the way I think, you know, about certain approach, you know, sometimes, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm a creative, I'm sure, you know, many, even though more analytical, many engineers are also, you know, seeing themselves as creatives. And sometimes, you know, when we, when we want to, uh, you know, kind of break out or think, think outside of the box, you know, we, we might might want to embrace a different angle on things. So that's where the, um, th that's, I think what, what I hope we can get, uh, across as well through, through the people that we get in front of the camera that they may, might share a piece of advice or, or an inspirational story for people to just, you know, tweak their knobs in the, in their, in their minds a little bit. So what are some of the reactions or recognition you've received maybe from the audience or from the broader community? whether it's engineering or non-engineering. Yeah. So we have, we see in the comments, you know, that this, uh, that this is something that people respond to positively, uh, that, uh, that take, take something away from it, um, that they find inspiration in that, but also that they learn something. And we have also, we have also won, uh, awards, uh, two Stevie awards and one video award. And, uh, that's that's thanks to our great team. You know, we're working together with an uh, award-winning filmmaker. His name is Patrick Shan. We're working with David Jennings, who's who is doing our uh, customer success video edits, and uh, a, a great team behind us. You know, that 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 do the graphic design and the the, the writing and all that. So, we I'm proud to be working with with such a team. You know, that that. Um, that allows us to produce such high quality, you know, content. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's the way it's received. I hope it's, it's received the way that we intended. And from what we see, you know, uh, that is the case. Well, that's great to hear. I mean, uh, with, with this kind of, uh, uh, series, you know, with it being produced by a company that's, you know, selling a product, um, I don't think that so many organizations might be willing to look at it the way you see it as, you know, storytelling and inspirational. I think they might immediately say, oh, this is a software company making this. This is just, you know, marketing fluff. And, you know, it's really being seen as like a legit, you know, documentary series kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we kind of branded ourselves that way, <laughs> so yeah. stories, you know, it's pretty obvious that, um, that that's a company doing that. And that that um, that puts some limitations on us, of course. You know, I mean, uh, you know, not everybody wants to endorse a different another company, or not not ever. You know, there's a sometimes there's like a co corporate interest in that. Um, it gets a little bit harder to to get your foot into certain doors, but we we do it intentionally because you know we say we are celebrating engineering and we are Altium. That's who we are, and those are our stories. And we're proud of our customers and what they, what they create. And yeah, I mean, you know, it's, uh, we don't need to hide that or anything. We, we're pretty bold 
in in enjoying who we are and showing who our customers are and and what we do together i i think it's also really a testament to the culture at altium because like you would never see like uh microsoft stories or something like that you know unless they were going to like try and broadcast it during the super bowl but um yeah you would never see that kind of thing from a lot of other companies it, it, i think that the culture just doesn't support that that kind of effort yeah i I need to also say, you know, it doesn't only help us. Um, it doesn't only allow us to show the world who we are as a brand. You know, it also helps us internally. You know, our our, our the employees, everybody who works at Altium um, sees those stories and sees what what impact you know we actually make. So, you know, it, it resonates on, on many, not only for our external audiences but also you know internally, people see a value in that. So. That's another reason, you know, why we want to keep producing these stories because, you know, it's, 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 it helps the corporate culture, the company culture internally, as well as, you know, our, our community. So that's interesting. I, I, I didn't necessarily think that employees might see this and get excited, but now that I'm thinking about it, that actually makes a lot of sense. Employees might see this and say, wow, that's really cool. I didn't even know people were using our software for that. So what is your vision for the series long term? You know, th this has been going on for a while and there are so many great episodes on the channel, but I'm wondering what's next. More stories, more stories. <laughs> Definitely, uh, you know, we want to we want to change the format. We want to evolve the format. You know, we, de de we depend a lot on, you know, uh, on the feedback from our audience, but we want to evolve it into into um, something new you know we want to go with the times and with, with um with with also where the industry is going you know so yeah i mean we there might be some changes in kind of the, the format of it but i think the whatever we do the essence of it uh will never change and i think that's that's kind of my mission is to to keep it true to the essence is keep it educational keep it inspirational keep it about the impact that the technology makes and uh in whatever way we do this you know um we want to make sure that uh, this brings value to our audience and and um that we tell these stories in, a, in the most authentic way that we can that's so great to hear and um i hope everyone that's out there watching on youtube and listening on audio You'll go over to YouTube and look up Altium Stories and watch some of these episodes. I think they're so well done. You could, you could, you could see the same quality on Netflix. It, that's how well they're done. This is not some guy walking around with a smartphone. Okay, so I hope everyone understands and and goes and checks all this stuff out. Um, ben, thanks so much for being here. This has been a real treat. Thank you, Zach, for having me. That uh, for I'm really grateful for the opportunity to share about all team stories. Absolutely. Thank you so much. To everyone that's out there watching and listening, we've been talking with Ben Kitzinger, producer and director of Altium Stories. If you are watching on YouTube, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. You'll be able to keep up with all of our podcast episodes and tutorials as they come out. And last but not least, don't forget to subscribe to Altium Stories and don't stop learning. Stay on track and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody.